This is the AT Launcher, and this is me playing on a server that I created using the AT Launcher. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a server, either vanilla or a modded server, with the AT Launcher. I do have to let you know that the server that we're about to create is locally hosted on your computer, meaning that if you want the server to stay up 24-7, you will need to keep your computer on 24-7 using your computer resources and stuff, your hardware. Also, if you want your friends to join your server, you will have to actually port forward the server, which means that you have to give your IP address to your friends to join. And if you know a little bit about computers, you don't want to be giving out your IP address to anybody except those people that you trust. And you know, they won't actually misuse your IP address because people with your IP address could literally boot you offline. They could use your IP address to either find exactly where you live, like your exact coordinates on the map, or they could just boot you offline where you can't connect. So if you have a friend that likes messing with you, I wouldn't give them your IP address. Why would I do instead if you ask me, instead of using AT Launcher, I would just use Apex Hosting and let them create the server for me. You could create either a Java or a Bedrock server, a server that is hosted online so you don't have to keep your computer on, a server that is completely safe and you don't have to use your IP address, and a server that supports over 200 mod packs with just a click of a button. And not only that, they will actually give you 25% off if you use the first link in the description. And something that is pretty cool is that they have locations all around the world so you don't have to worry about bad internet whenever you join your server or your friends don't have to worry about bad internet. And something else before we go ahead and create that AT Launcher server is that you could control the server console through your phone, meaning that you could be away from the house and stuff and still be able to access the server console, change the settings, kick people out, whatever you need to do because it is your server. Again, first link in the description for 25% off. And now let's get started with the tutorial. Now in this video, we're assuming you already have AT Launcher installed. If you don't, go ahead and check one of our recent videos here in the channel. We have a video on how to install AT Launcher. Anyways, let's assume that you do have the launcher installed. Here's how we're going to create that server. First of all, open up the AT Launcher, log in, and then head over to create pack. In here, go ahead and choose what version of Minecraft do you want to create the server for? In this case, I'm going to select 1.21 because that is the server that I'm going to create since that's the newest version of Minecraft. Then also go ahead and select if you want to create a server with mods or a server that allows mods. For example, if you want to create a fabric Porsche or something else, you could select it here. In this case, I'm going to select none, which means that this is going to be a complete vanilla server. And then once you've done that, select the version. And if you want to add mods or not, go ahead and change the description and the name of the server that you're about to create. For example, I'm going to name mine Apex Hosting because it'll give you 25% off if you use the first link in the description for a server. And then I'm going to go ahead and add 1.21 in there. The description, I'm just going to leave it as it is. We could change that later. Don't worry. Once you're happy with the name, go ahead and hit where it says create server. And as you can see, it will instantly start creating that server. As you can see in here, it says Minecraft 1.21 server has been installed. Find it in the servers tab. Go ahead and click OK and head over to the servers tab here on the right side. And you will see your servers running in here. As you can see, we have the Apex Hosting 1.21, which is the one we just created. Now we're going to go ahead and launch our server. To do so, just go ahead and click where it says launch. It also launch you with other options. But in this case, I'm just going to hit launch and I'm going to give it a couple seconds for the server to start creating itself since this is the first time we're opening that server. By the way, make sure that if you're running a micro 1.21 server that you have Java 21 installed in your computer because it is a requirement. If you don't have it installed, AT Launcher, I believe, will let you know that you have an out of date Java when you launch AT Launcher if you don't have Java 21. But if you're having any issues trying to open up that server and it's something related to Java, most likely means that you don't have Java updated. Anyways, once you try to launch that server the first time, you're going to get this little line in here saying you need to agree to the ULA file that it's normal. Go ahead and close out from the command prompt. And now we're going to go ahead and agree to that ULA file. So go ahead and click where it says open folder right below your server. That is going to open the folder that has all the files that you need really to run a Minecraft server. And in here, or most of the files, we're still missing some that are going to appear once we actually run through the ULA. So go ahead and open this text document named ULA.txt. You could right click and open it with a notepad or notepad plus plus, or you could just double click on it and it will open the text document itself. In here, we're going to head over to ULA equal false, and we're going to change it to ULA equal true. Always only if you agree to the ULA, right? So if you don't know what the ULA is, just go ahead and copy this link in here, paste it on your browser and read to the user agreements on playing online Minecraft. Anyways, once you do that, go ahead and hit control S to save the document or head over to file and hit save or just go ahead and close. And if it prompts you to save it, go ahead and hit save. And now we could close out of this folder and hit launch one more time for our server to start running. And this time our server is actually going to fully run, fully create, and it's going to actually be a server, a working server. Just give it some time. Let's go ahead and wait for this to finish. Now, this is something you might get, most likely you will get, is asking you to allow Java to have access to your network. This is so people could connect to your server later on. And so you could have the server open for people to connect. This doesn't mean that the server is ready for your friends to connect because we'll still need to port forward, which we'll talk about that in the end. This just means that 
that this is like the first step of opening that server app. So go ahead and allow it. Just go ahead and wait for that server to finish. As you can see in here, it says done. That means the server is already running. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop the server because I want to show you a couple of things about your server, customizing your server, changing the RAM, opening the server app for your friends, all of that. So now let's go ahead and stop that server. Just type a stop into the console and hit enter. You could always close the server from here, but I believe that typing a stop and hitting stop, actually it's better because it will actually save whatever is happening in the server. If you just close it through here without hitting a stop, you might lose some information or some something. If something happened in your server in the last second and you close it, it might not register. So always go ahead and hit stop. And then once the server has fully stopped and saved, go ahead and close out the command prompt or the console in here. Now we're going to go ahead and open the server folder. Go ahead and click on open folder. And in this folder, we have a lot of things that will allow us to customize our server. Actually, in this case, we're just going to focus on the server properties file, which is right here. As you can see, you're going to right click on it. You're going to click open with and then select notepad. Or if you see it in here, if you have Windows 11, just go ahead and hit edit in notepad. In this case, I'm going to use notepad plus plus, but don't worry, you could use regular notepad and it, it should be fine. OK, it's the same thing. Just notepad plus plus is a little bit more advanced and it's free, it's completely free to download. If you're going to be doing server side stuff, I recommend you get it. It's going to help you a lot to understand what's going on in here. Anyways, once over here, we're going to look for a couple things in here, a couple important things. First of all, of course, you can modify your server a lot. You could change the difficulty. For example, if you want to change it to hard, you change it in here, right? So from easy to hard or whatever you want to do, put it on peaceful, whatever you want to do in here. Another thing that you could look in here is the max amount of player. In this case, it's just 20 players, but you could change that to 25, 100. You could lower that. If you only want five of your friends playing at a time, you could put it on five or something like that. That's up to you. I recommend that you read out through these instructions because there's a lot of things that you could change here through these settings. You could change a lot of things. For example, message of the day. Whenever you see that server, if you wanted to say something else, you could change that in here. Anyways, let's go over to the important things. The important things in here are the server IP and the server port. These two will allow us to port forward our server. Now, in the server IP, we're going to go ahead and add our local IPv4 address, which you could find if you head over to search, you head over to command prompt in here, open up that command prompt, type in IP config in there, just like that, hit enter, and that'll give you all this information in here. And as you can see where it says IPv4 address, that's your local IPv4 address. Go ahead and copy and select that. And don't worry, this information is not confidential. This is not your public IP. That's why I'm showing it in here. It doesn't really matter. As a matter of fact, most of us or a lot of us will have the same IPv4 address. So go ahead and select that string of numbers at the end, close out the command prompt, head back to the server IP, go ahead and paste that in there, hit control V to paste that local IPv4 address. Now this IPv4 address, you're going to use later on to join your own server if the server is not detected by Minecraft automatically. Nowadays, Minecraft usually detects your local servers. As a matter of fact, sometimes Minecraft will even detect a local server without having the server IP there. But since I'm an old school guy, I'm used to adding the server IP in there. A lot of people say you don't need to add it anymore. I still like to add it because that makes sure it's when I pull forward, I'm pull forward in the right local IP address, especially if you're going to have multiple servers running in the same machine. I like to do things the right way. Anyways, this number in here, it's already added and that's the number we're going to use to join our own server. And the server port is a number that it shouldn't matter right now. It will only matter when we port forward. Just go ahead and port forward the 25565 port in your computer for TCP and UDP. And that will actually allow your friends to join and your server will be set up. If you don't know how to port forward, don't worry, because I'm going to link a video at the end of this video, which is actually our guide on how to port forward. It's pretty simple. Anyways, now that we have the server IP added in here, let's go ahead and hit save, of course, and then close out from the notepad. And now before we go ahead and launch our server and test it, I want to show you how to actually change the RAM amount of your server. So here where it says launch server BAT file, this little document in here or file, that's the file that is going to allow us to change our RAM. And to do so, just go ahead and right click on it, click open with, or just go ahead and edit it in notepad or notepad plus plus, doesn't matter. And in here, you will actually see a line. It's one of the first lines that says, this is the max memory. And as you can see, it says set max memory equal to G. We could actually change that to top G. And no, I'm just kidding. We could actually change that to something like four gigabytes or maybe six gigabytes, eight gigabytes, 16 gigabytes. It all depends on how much you have available on your computer. If you don't know, you could check actually real quick. Just go ahead and right click here on your taskbar, click on task manager, head over to performance in here, and then you will actually see your memory in here. As you can see, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM on my computer. I don't recommend giving your server more than 50% of whatever you have available. So that's half of whatever you have. I have 32 gigabytes, so I wouldn't give my server more than 16 gigabytes. Honestly, four gigabytes right now should be plenty for a vanilla server for a couple of friends. If you need a more professional server, again, I'm going to leave that first link in the description for 25% off with Apex hosting. Well, they will actually do everything for you, even the port forwarding part, and you don't have to go through the struggle yourself. Anyways, I'm going to leave mine at four gigabytes. Look into yours, look into how much memory you will need for your friends and stuff. If you're running with mods, you might need more gigabytes, but four gigabytes is plenty for me. Then hit save, close out from the notepad again. Now we could close out from this folder and let's go ahead and launch our server one more time. This time we're going to let the server run and we're actually 
also going to open Minecraft app. So go ahead and open your Minecraft launcher and go ahead and launch your Minecraft game. Just make sure that you launch vanilla Minecraft if you're running a vanilla server, because if you try to join using mods, it most likely won't let you. Okay, so go ahead and open your Minecraft launcher and launch vanilla Minecraft 1.21. It's very important that you actually match your server version when you play Minecraft. Okay, so if you try to use Minecraft 1.20.5, it won't let you join a server 1.21 version. I know this might be basic information, but a lot of players out there don't know this. And we like to do in depth guys in here and try to let you know everything that we can so you don't have to struggle. So let's go ahead and hit play and let's go ahead and open the game. Now, so you can see I have the console in here with my server and I have the game on the right side and I'm going to show you how to join it. So first of all, head over to Multiplayer. And now here, it's very important that you pay attention. Sometimes if you let this scan for the world, it will actually find it on your local network. You just got to give it some time and actually find your world. I've seen that happen more often if you don't have the IP address on your server properties. I personally like adding the IP address. A lot of you might not, it might not be for you. Again, people say it's not needed. I still do it because that's the old way of joining a server and that's the way I do it. Now to join our server, if it's not a scan here automatically, we're going to either hit direct connection where we're going to actually join our server using either local host or our local IP before address, the one we pasted on our server properties. Or if you want the server to stay here forever, you could just click on add server, name this whatever you want. Like for example, I'm going to name mine Apex Hosting. You already know it was going to be Apex Hosting 1.21. And then on the server address, go ahead and type in that local IP before address or just paste it. If you still have it copied on your clipboard, go ahead and paste it in here. Now hit done and you will see that server up here down here. Now you could also type local host in here, but I have seen that it doesn't work if you added the IP before address to the server property. So the only times I will type local hosting here is if I'm going to join the server and I didn't add my local IP before address, I'll just type local host. And as you can see here, it's saying can connect to server. It doesn't work if you added the local IP before address, at least for me, that's how it is as of now. But that is pretty much how you're going to join your server. And I'm going to show you that if we hit play on those servers that we just added in there, it shows on the console on the left that we join our own server. We could even head over to the console and OP ourselves in here. So all you have to do is type OP and then type your game tag or your username, whatever, hit enter, and it will actually give you server operation on the on the game. As you can see in there, it says server made it's Cuba server operator, which means that we now have the ability to use commands. So let's go ahead and we want to change to creative. We could go ahead and do that and it will actually show everything here on the console. So even if you're not connected, you could see what's happening. Unfortunately, since this is locally hosted, you will always have to keep your computer on something that doesn't happen if you're using Apex hosting. And yes, you could see this console far away from the house because you could see this console through your phone if you're using Apex hosting against first link in the description. And anyways, how do we have our friends join now? Well, to have your friends join, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is port forward that server port that I showed you earlier when we were editing the server. And to port forward, guys, honestly, it, it's a little bit more complicated than created the server. It's not super hard. And that is why we put it all together into one video, which will be coming up on the screen right now. I didn't want to make this video super, super long. So go ahead and watch that video next on how to port forward to have your friends join you at no time. And thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out. If you were able to create that server, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, bye bye.